On a warm summer night in Pennsylvania, the air is filled with harmonizing sounds of tree frogs and crickets. The atmosphere is thick with humidity, and yet sweet with the scent of seasonal blooms. Out of the darkness, a small, gentle creature emerges, a creature whose reputation is driven by fear, caused by ignorance, superstition, and folklore. It is a creature whose time has come. It is the season of the bat. Ever since the 1930s, our image of bats was derived from scenes like this. Mythical creatures that roamed the night, feeding on the blood of their unsuspecting victims. With Count Dracula as a press agent, it's no wonder that bats have long endured a bad reputation. Other general misconceptions about bats include the notions that bats attack humans, get tangled in your hair, and are filthy, disease-spreading, flying rodents that pose a threat to human health. The fact is, bats are not rodents as you might think, but highly developed mammals that have inhabited the earth for over 50 million years. They live on the average of 30 years, and their scientific name is Chiroptera, which means hand wing. Cal Butchkoski, who has been studying Pennsylvania bats since 1985, gives us a close look at their unique anatomy. Little brown bat is, uh, is a true mammal. This is our most common species of bat here in Pennsylvania. Its wings are made up of uh, skin stretched uh, between the body parts that would correspond to our arms, hands, and legs. What we have here coming out from the body is the arm until we get to this point right here. This would correspond to the wrist. And we have the thumb sticking up. And then four finger bones. Those joints help the bat to form the structure of the wing. Bats are not blind, nor are they aggressive. And you are more likely to contract rabies from your own household pet than you are from a bat. But as with any wild animal, you should wear gloves when handling them. And if you are bitten by accident, consult local wildlife or health authorities. In sharp contrast to what we perceive in Western culture, this ancient Chinese symbol shows five bats representing the concepts of health, wealth, happiness, longevity, and a peaceful death. Here in Pennsylvania, bats provide a valuable service. They are the only major predator of nighttime flying insects, including mosquitoes. A single little brown bat, weighing only one half ounce, can consume over 500 insects an hour. Despite this crucial ecological role, bat populations have seriously declined over the past 40 years. Our fears have led to needless, ineffective exterminations, and our lack of knowledge has caused major disturbances to their natural habitat, resulting in extirpation of entire colonies. As bat populations diminish, it seems inevitable that insect populations will grow we are only beginning to realize the impact of our careless actions. A hundred years ago, we still had passenger pigeons all over the state. They're gone. A hundred years from now, I don't want to look back and say, gee, we used to have a lot of bats, but they're gone. Bats are in trouble because they live in troubled habitats. All 10 bat species that are found in Pennsylvania are protected by game and wildlife law. Anyone that kills a bat in a cave or while free flying is subject to a $100 fine per bat. 
if that ha bat happens to be an endangered or a threatened species, then the fines range from $500 to $200,000. With springtime comes the onset of new life. Female bats mate in late summer and store the sperm in their uterus through winter hibernation. When they become active in the spring, ovulation occurs and the gestation period begins. Having left their hibernaculars, the pregnant females locate a habitat suitable for giving birth. In a small abandoned church just outside Canoe Creek State Park is one of the largest known maternity colonies of bats in the Commonwealth. Each spring, some 7,000 female bats seek the shelter of this small church. Many of them will give birth to only a single pup. This female is in an upright position, an indication that she is in labor. In less than 10 minutes, a pup emerges under the protective covering of the mother's tail membrane. When fully emerged, the mother cleans the pup and detaches the umbilical cord. The pup immediately climbs up under her arm where it will secure itself to the mammary gland with special hooked baby teeth. After a few days, the young bat's eyes will open and the mother will leave the roost during the night to feed and regain her strength. For the next four to five weeks, the babies will remain flightless as they continue to nurse and prepare for their maiden flight. Summer, a time of joyous activity for most living creatures, and bats are no exception. Imagine that you could dance on your fingertips in the nighttime sky perform high-speed acrobatics and maneuver with the skill and freedom few creatures enjoy. You sing a silent song to find your way through the darkness, and your lifestyle is beneficial to other organisms that share your space. As nighttime approaches, local residents gather to watch a summer's night ritual. They watch not with fear, but with wonder, they understand the benefit that the bats offer to this region of the state. The bats emerge, slowly at first, then increase in numbers as the sun sets. They will travel up to 20 miles in search of the perfect feeding ground, devouring large numbers of insects along the way. This is an important time of year for baby bats. They're learning how to fly, they're learning how to use their echolocation system and they're, uh, they're learning a lot more about their environment around them. It seems that the young bats uh, almost need this maternal, maternal care to survive. I've talked to animal rehabilitators it's, and they, they seem to indicate that baby bats that have been hand reared, uh, uh, you just can't release them. They don't, they don't seem to be able to do well out there without having that uh, maternal care and being almost being taught how to hunt and use their echolocation system. They, they mimic what their mothers are doing out there when they're foraging, and it seems to be a, a, fairly, important, uh, a fairly important part of their life for survival. Along a stretch of the Little Juniata River in northern Huntington County is a prime feeding ground for bats. It's a healthy environment for fish and for bats, as they both depend on moths, mosquitoes, 
and mayflies as their main source of nutrition. The ability to capture 500 insects an hour requires more than good eyesight in the dark. Bats emit a high frequency sound that goes out, strikes an object, and returns in the form of an echo. This is called echolocation. It enables the bat to determine the size, shape, texture, direction, and speed of a moving object. These bats will continue to feed throughout the night, stopping for an occasional rest in nearby trees. They will feed nightly through the summer months to store up enough body fat for winter hibernation. As daybreak approaches, the bats return to their roost. It is then that a strange phenomenon occurs. The bats begin to swarm outside the little church until most of the colony returns. Their actions seem social in nature. It's almost as if they were celebrating a successful night in the form of a bat ballet. Small church attics are not the only place Pennsylvania bats take up residence in the summer months. A few remain in caves throughout the year, while others reside in hollowed out trees and foliage. But as we all know, many find their way into the attics of our homes. On cool nights, it's not uncommon for a bat to enter a room of a house through a tiny crack or crevice in the attic. If this happens to you, it's important not to panic. The bat is not in search of humans. It is simply lost. If you close the door to the room that it's in and open a window, the bat will find its way out in a matter of minutes. If it should land in the room, use a small container and place it over the bat. Then slide a piece of cardboard under the container and release the bat outdoors. One of the most favorable times for monitoring bat populations and species is during peak foraging activity in the summer months. Cal Butchkoski of the Pennsylvania Game Commission and Jim Hart of Shippensburg University are erecting a fine nylon net called a mist net across a prime foraging location. As the evening progresses, a fair number of bats are captured and information is documented as part of an annual survey. The bats will be identified by species, sex, age, and weight. The information serves as a barometer for increases or declines in bat populations. Once the data is recorded, the bats are released. So basically, the, the purpose of mist netting is to understand our bats in their summer habitat. Just to get an idea of what we have out there, how many we have out there, and where each species is. Autumn is the season for change. As the summer draws to a close, bats begin to sense a metamorphosis occurring. Perhaps it's a chill in the air or a reduction in insect populations. Whatever the case, a change is also occurring among Pennsylvania's bats. Little by little, colonies begin to disperse. Migratory species head south, while native species go out in search of a suitable habitat for winter hibernation. 
Hibernaculars are crucial to the survival of large colonies throughout the long winter months. So vital is this habitat that great measures have been taken to protect these locations across the Commonwealth. Some of the most critical habitat for our bats are caves or mines, places where they hibernate. And uh, the problem is if, if people start going into these sites in the wintertime when the bats are hibernating, the, the disturbance causes them to use up a lot of their stored fat. Also, a lot of vandalism can go on inside these, these underground shelters. People actually go in and kill the bats. So some sites with rare or, or endangered species in them have been gated. And the purpose of the gate is mainly one reason. That's to keep people out, keep people from disturbing, disturbing these animals when they're hibernating throughout the winter. There are a, a large number of cavers out there, sport cavers, people that uh, enjoy going in and looking at the underground formations. And in fact, most of these uh, people are conservation minded and they're conservationists and uh, they're beginning to understand that it's very important to stay out of these underground shelters where under underground hibernaculars where bats are uh, in the winter time whenever whenever they're present the best thing to do is uh, if, if you want to enter an area where there are a lot of bats hibernating save it until the summer months when the bats are no longer using the structure This cave was gated 10 years ago when there was an estimated 3,000 bats residing. Since the gate was put in place, the winter bat population has increased to over 12,000. At another underground site in northern Lycoming County, the quest for locating rare and endangered species continues. Just shy of the entrance, a bat trap is erected Within a short time, a surprising number of bats are collected. While no endangered species were encountered, the sheer number of bats collected was an indication that this site houses one of the largest hibernating colonies in Pennsylvania. By autumn's end, our young bats have sharpened their navigational skills, and mating has occurred among adult bat populations. Summer habitats so vibrant with life just a short time ago are now vacant. For the homeowner, who may have supported a summer colony, it is a time for decisions. While having the benefit of nature's insectivores living nearby, it is not desirable to share the same living space. Bat guano possesses powerful fertilizing qualities, but at the same time emits a powerful odor. The combination of guano and bat urine is not only offensive, but it can attract other pests, such as roaches and beetles. So evicting a bat colony from your home is recommended. You can start in late fall by installing one-way doors in locations where bats frequently enter your home. It is constructed of nothing more than strong mesh screening secured on three sides with duct tape or nails. The door will allow any remaining bats to escape, but makes re-entry virtually impossible. Once you're certain that all the bats are gone, you should inspect your home for other possible entrances. For large entrances, such as attic vents, a thin mesh screen secured with wooden strips and nails will suffice. For smaller cracks and crevices, spray foam insulation or caulking is an easy, inexpensive solution. Now that your home will be free from bats, you may want to consider another proposition. Lisa Williams is a graduate student at Penn State University in the School of Forestry Resources. As a project for her master's degree, Lisa is studying the use of bat boxes. Really, when you start to realize the value that bats have as far as insect control, um, each bat eating 3,000 mosquitoes or insects a night, then uh, 
it really is advantageous for homeowners to keep a colony around, but at the same time, you don't want to share your house with them. So the bat boxes seem to be a good compromise. You can take the colony out of the attic, convince them to leave the attic, but then you also provide a safe place for them to go to keep the insects down in your yard. Ideally, bat boxes should be erected the summer before the house is sealed. This gives bats the opportunity to become familiar with the box. When the bats return in the spring, they won't have a way into your house, but they will have a new summer residence. And what we usually try and do is take some droppings from the attic, um, mix them with water, and pour them through the bat box so it smells familiar when the bats come back in the spring. And we've had pretty good success with bats moving in. After talking with Lisa, she described to me how they could use bat boxes to relocate the bats from bothering us with a little bit of noise under the siding to the bat boxes, which were provided to us. And that seemed like um, a humane thing to do. We had realized that we didn't have any bugs in, the, in, the in between our houses here. And of course, it was because of the presence of those bats. Winter, a time of silent beauty as the snow gently falls on a Pennsylvania landscape. With the appearance of diamond-studded jewels, bats find tranquility in the shelter of an underground cavern. It is here that they will remain for the duration of the season. Bats are true hibernators. They possess the ability to lower their body temperatures equal to that of the cave environment, which remains constant. They will live off the stored body fat accumulated from months of feeding on insects. The slightest disturbance will cause these bats to shiver and wake, using up to 80 days supply of the energy needed to survive the winter. Surveys are done quickly, this time of year, to alleviate unnecessary stress on the animals. So you can see if, if these animals were disturbed too often, uh, they would quickly run out of stored fat and uh, would either come out of the hibernation period in a weak condition, unable to make it back to their summer roosts. The females may not give birth that year or they may just uh, simply die in the cave or just outside the cave entrance. I think the welfare of bats and people are linked. They have been historically. In South America, bats are important pollinators, and fruit bats are important dispersers of seed. Here in Pennsylvania, they're important for insect control. These are all free services. We don't pay a cent for them. For these services to continue, you must learn to replace folklore with facts about bats. That's the challenge we have here in Pennsylvania and across the United States. And so, as these gentle creatures sleep, the season of the bat comes to a close. If knowledge is power, then we can only hope that this program has empowered you with a new sensitivity. The Wild Resource Conservation Fund has and will continue to support important research and improve public awareness so that this unique, irreplaceable creature that we call bat will continue to flourish for another 50 million years.
A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.